Hello everybody and welcome back to yet another one of these Corona 4 3ds Max physical material tutorials. In this one we're going to be creating a plant leaf material that we're going to apply to, well, our plant here. Now we've already created a default Corona physical material, we dragged it into the slate material editor here, but we haven't changed any of its parameters. We simply took this material and we applied it onto our plant leaf object here. And so with that, as you can see, everything is set and ready to go. So um, let's go at it. So step number one, as always, should be to set the metalness mode here correctly. So we're creating a plant leaf material, which is a non-metal material. So we want our metalness mode here to be set to non-metal, which it is. And so congratulations, step number one complete. Now for step number two, what we'll be doing is, is we're going to be introducing some color to our plant leaves. We're going to be plugging in a couple of different diffuse textures into the base color slot here. Okay, now we already kind of pre-prepared here two different uh, diffuse bitmaps. Okay, so let's just zoom in on them. And as you can see, you know, we're talking plural here. We have two different bitmaps and why is that? Well, you know, uh, typically with plant leaves, you want to have some variation in there, you know, because no two plant leaves are ever exactly the same. And so, you know, what better way than to introduce that variation uh, other than having, you know, two different bitmaps that you can use, right? Well, technically, you know, what would be even better than two bitmaps would be three or four or five bitmaps, but, you know, uh, two is a good starting point. You know, we're just talking about that extra realism. And so, you know, um, some variation with plant leaves is always really, really welcome. Okay. Now, um, how are we going to apply these two bitmaps? How are we going to plug them into our Corona physical material? Well, we're going to help ourselves out with the Corona multi map. Okay. Now, if you don't know what the Corona multi map does, well, we have a uh, Corona multi map specific tutorial on our YouTube. So if you want to learn more about it, please do check the tutorial out. But in short, you know, the Corona multi map can take a uh, different uh, sort of bitmap or shader inputs, and it can distribute them onto a single Corona physical material. So basically each leaf is either going to have one texture applied to it or the other. And that that's how we're going to easily introduce some of that variation we talked about. So with that said, you know, uh, let's set everything up here. So um, Corona Multimap, we want to uh, first adjust the item count here. We want to lower it from six to two because we're only working with two bitmaps here. And then uh, we're going to also want to change the distribution mode here from Material ID to Mesh Element. Now, why Mesh Element? Well, if we take a look at our Plant Leaf Object, Plant Leaf Mesh, and if we go uh, into the Element mode here, you're going to see that each of these leaves here is its own Mesh Element. Right. And so that's why we're using the uh, mesh element distribution mode here. And again, you know, if you want to learn more about how the Corona Multimap works, do check out our Corona Multimap tutorial that's on YouTube. This is a really, really useful shader that can really come in handy in so many different scenarios for you. Okay. All right. Now, to finish this setup here, let's plug these bitmaps into the Corona Multimap here. And then let's plug the Corona Multimap into the base color slot here. And just between that, as you'll see, you know, we have that uh, plant looking like, well, a lot more like a plant would look like, right? Because now it has some color. Now, um, to continue with this sort of basic setup here, let's bring in some roughness maps in here as well, just so we break up those reflections a little bit and add some realism that way. Um, but, you know, uh, you're quickly going to probably notice that we're actually not dealing with roughness maps. These are glossiness maps. OK, um, but that's not a problem for us, because if you'll remember with the Corona physical material, you can easily switch between using the roughness roughness mode or uh, the glossiness roughness mode. You can switch between the two simply by going under the advanced options here and switching the roughness mode from roughness to glossiness. All right. And now we're using the glossiness roughness mode. All right. So now, because we have two uh, glossiness maps, we're again going to help ourselves out with the Corona multi map. We're just going to copy the one that we created earlier. And now the only thing that we need to pay attention to is that we plug these two guys in in the correct order. Now, uh, the way that I imported these into the slate material editor, I know 
that this diffuse bitmap matches this glossiness bitmap. And this bit uh, diffuse bitmap matches this this glossiness bitmap. Okay, so that means that we're just gonna have to plug them into the Corona Multimap shader in the same order. So yeah, uh, diffuse bitmap A, if you will, is plugged into the color slot zero, and the matching glossiness map needs to be plugged into that same slot in this new Corona Multimap shader. Okay, and the same, we do the same for the other glossiness map as well. Right, so with that done, now we just need to plug this whole thing into the base glossiness slot here. And voila, you know, we're adding just a little bit of that extra realism to our to our material here. Now to finish this sort of basic setup off, let's also bring in some normal maps, okay? Uh, so that we have some of those bumps and bruises on our leaves as well. And uh, the procedure uh, is going to be exactly the same as it was for the diffuse and glossiness maps. We're just going to copy the Corona Multimap shader. We're going to plug the normal maps in, in this same order as the other ones were plugged in. And then we're just going to plug the whole thing into the base bump slot here. Okay. And voila, just like that, we've created this sort of really, really basic material here that kind of already looks pretty cool. Now, could we still improve this setup? Well, yes, by all means, you know, we could play around with the mixing coefficients here for the glossiness map. We could adjust the uh, bump map. Uh, further okay maybe we could make it stronger or less stronger we could introduce some extra maps in here and so on and so forth what you could also ultimately do is we could go into the corona multi-map shader here and we could for example play around with the hue random value and add some extra variation here as well and maybe uh, add some gamma randomness as well you know it's just little things like that that can really add a lot uh to the to the realism Okay, but for all intents and purposes, we're pretty happy with the setup here. Okay, but obviously, if you're really creating a close up shot of a plant like this, you would still want to tweak things even further, right? Now, with all that said, we're still missing one of the most key ingredients for when it comes to creating realistic plant leaf materials, and that is that translucent slash subsurface scattering effect. Okay, so if we switch our rendering pass here from beauty to translucency, you're going to see that the other two plants in our scene have this really nice translucent well, slash subsurface scattering effect to them. So as you can see in our scene, we have this window opening and then we have this pretty strong directional uh, sunlight coming in. Okay. And in these cases, plant leaves typically exhibit this kind of behavior where, you know, the light um, sort of hits the leaf it travels through its volume, if you will, through its insides, it scatters around in there, and then it sort of comes out on the other side, which creates this really, really nice effect, right? But now, as you can see, you know, <laughs> our uh, our plant leaves, the one that we're, we've created here, uh, don't exhibit this kind of behavior. So that's what we're going to be tackling next year, because this is one of those really key effects if you're creating uh, realistic plant leaf materials. Now, before we actually go out and we start tweaking all these parameters in here, let's just talk a little bit about the difference between translucency and subsurface scattering. Okay, so if your plant leaves have thickness to them, okay, then you would use a subsurface scattering to create this effect. But plant leaves typically, let's just uh, let's just find a good. Uh, leaf on our on our hero object here. Plant leaves typically come in, or they are typically modeled so that they have no thickness. Okay, as you can clearly see on this piece of uh, geometry here, on this leaf, um, we're dealing with basically just single-sided polygons. Okay, so this leaf has no thickness; it has no internal volume. Okay, and now uh, strictly speaking. Uh, you cannot use subsurface scattering uh, for whenever you have uh, these kinds of, uh, well, meshes, these, this kind of geometry, if you will. Okay, now why? Well, the reasoning is pretty simple, you know. For the light to do subsurface scattering, uh, you need to have some sort of a volume in which the light is going to scatter. And, you know, our mesh here doesn't. 
as you can clearly see, right? Now, what to do in these cases? Well, the solution is pretty straightforward, pretty simple, really. So um, all you need to do is you need to tick this thin shell parameter here. And this one is going to simulate a thin shell that has no internal volume. Now, to kind of put that in layman terms, it's going to simulate internal volume on meshes with no geometrical thickness. Okay, so basically it's going to simulate that volume for you. Okay. Now, one additional thing to note here with the thin shell parameter is that it is not designed to simulate really big internal volumes. Okay. It is strictly meant for those really thin objects where modeling the volume with geometrical thickness would make very little visual difference. So don't use the thin shell parameter to simulate internal volumes that are like five centimeters thick. Okay. That's not what it is designed to do. It is to be used primarily for things such as papers or leaves or other thin objects where modeling the actual thickness would incur little to no visual difference. And just as a little bonus explanation, why are plant leaves typically modeled with no thickness? Well, it is to conserve on the polygon count because giving them geometrical thickness would basically mean you're doubling the geometry. Okay. So now, as soon as you toggle thin shell to on, the translucency parameter will become available to you, as you can see. Okay. And uh, with the translucency, you're basically, you know, recreating that subsurface scattering effect, but it's called translucency because it, is, it only applies on these types of thin shell meshes, right? So that's the differentiating factor between translucency and the actual subsurface scattering. All right. Okay, cool. So that's sort of the theory behind all that. Now uh, let's try and set up uh, this material. Okay. Let's try to set it up uh, like we would in a real production. So to add translucency, we first need to up the fraction amount here. So if we up it to 1.0, you, you're going to see that now our mesh here is, well, now our material here is super, super duper translucent. All right. Now, typically for plant leaves, uh, the fraction is somewhere between 0 0.1 and 0 0.3, maybe even 0 0.4. Kind of depends on the leaf and the plant that you're working with. But typically, you know, um, these fraction values will fall somewhere in between uh, those amounts. Okay. Now, you can also plug in a map in here. Uh, we actually don't have one for this particular um, for this particular asset here. But a translucency fraction map basically looks like a black and white map, which defines areas that are more translucent and areas that are less translucent. So if you take a look at our leaf here, you know, a translucency fraction map would probably um, be a little bit wider on the sides here. Okay. And a little bit darker, AKA less translucent uh, on this middle part here, which because typically with plants, these uh, sort of veins here are a bit less translucent. Okay. So you can definitely, you know, if you have assets that have uh, translucency fraction maps, you can definitely plug them in here. But if you don't, you know, in most cases, that's also fine. And you're, you're still going to get a pretty realistic effect happening. All right, cool. So with the translucency fraction set, let's turn our attention to the translucency color parameter. Okay. So the color parameter determines the color of the translucency effect. So if we take a look at our rendered image right now, okay, uh, you're going to see that, uh, well, the translucency is kind of looking great. The translucency effect is kind of looking great. Now, yes, there's some color to it, but that, that is because, you know, the sun that's shining in through the window is a little bit warmer. Okay. So that's also going to uh, definitely play a role in uh, how your translucency is looking. But by and large, as you can clearly see, you know, we're dealing with this sort of gray translucency color. Now, if we play with this parameter, and for example, if we give it a red color, well, look at that, you know, now our translucency is, is red. <laughs> Okay. And so that's what the translucency color parameter does. But now if we're being a little bit more practical, uh, what does this uh, parameter mean for your plant leaf materials? Well, if you were to say, for example, uh, cut this leaf and you would take a look at it, how it looks like on the inside. Okay. 
Well, that's sort of the color that you're wanna, gonna wanna input uh, with this parameter. Okay, and now typically when you when you if you cut through through leaves in real world, you're gonna see that on the inside there this sort of um, greenish color. If the outside is green, uh, but they're just a little bit warmer than that color. Okay, but now if you have a translucency color map, you can definitely plug it into the translucency color slot. That said, if you don't have a translucency color map. Well, we're going to show you a, a pretty useful technique here on how you can kind of get that uh, translucency color map uh, from your diffuse maps. OK, so um, we're going to bring in a new Corona color correct shader. OK, and then we're going to plug in the Corona multi shader with the diffuse maps into the Corona color correct shader and the color correct shader we're going to plug into the translucency color slot so this guy right here okay so um and now what we can do is we can up the temperature for example or we could play with the hue or the gamma or the saturation really but we're just gonna we're just gonna play with the temperature for now so we're just going to up it to say ninety thousand. okay so by doing that uh, what we're essentially doing with this technique is now we're taking the diffuse maps and we're giving them um, some extra warmth. Okay. And then that's what's driving the translucency color parameter here, as you can see. And again, why are we doing it like this? Well, as we said, you know, if you were to cut through a leaf in, in the real world, you would probably see, not in all instances, but in most instances, you would probably see that the inside of the leaf is very similar to the outside. Okay, so that's why we can take the diffuse texture. And, um, you know, it's just a little bit, typically it's just a little bit warmer than the outside is. Okay, so that's why we can play with the uh, temperature parameter in here and we just add a little warmth to it. Now, again, you know, this is not a rule set in stone, you know, some Sometimes you just want that warm translucency effect recreated, okay? And, um, you know, um, you don't need to know how the leaf looks like from the inside. You can just go in here and just visually adjust this parameter until you get to a result that's looking pretty uh, cool. You know, you can even make it colder, uh, you can make it warmer, um, and so on and so forth. So uh, basically, with this technique, you have a couple of different uh, ways on how you can recreate uh, this really realistic looking uh, translucency color here okay all right and uh believe it or not that's about it for when it comes to creating realistic and convincing plant leaf materials so if we do a really quick recap here what we've done is is we've uh you know we've brought in a couple of diffuse maps we plugged them with the help of the corona multi shader of course we plugged them into the base color slot and we did the same with the glossness and bump slot so that's you know that sort of uh, really basic material setup that we did here. And then, you know, uh, we've added that translucency effect to our, uh, to our material as well. And we haven't, or we didn't use subsurface scattering because our mesh is actually super thin. Uh, and so because of that, we've resorted to taking this thin shell option to on. And so now we're sort of simulating that internal volume. Even though our mesh has no internal volume, we're simulating it. And uh, because we're doing that, we have access to the translucency parameter. Okay. And so in a nutshell, that is it. That is how you create a basic plant leaf material. We hope you've learned something new here. And um, as always, you know, we'll see.